Energy drinks aren't mandatory, but they sure are one of my favorite electives. I don't claim to know everything, but school is actually what I'm good at. Although, if you're coming here for PE advice, then let's just say that's off the curriculum. Now let's get to learning. And we're breaking this video into 10 chapters. Chapter one is getting into the mindset. Chapter two is organizing our space. Chapter three in a similar vein is creating systems. Chapter four is time management. Chapter five is study strategies. Chapter six is goal setting. Chapter seven is nailing presentations, oral exams, and chats. Chapter eight is nailing quizzes and written exams. Chapter nine is prioritizing self-care. And chapter 10 is community. Chapter one, getting into the mindset. First of all, Confidence is everything. I always say this. I have several videos on confidence. That is because almost nothing can be achieved without confidence. It's what makes you actually go the length. Starting off with a positive mindset is essential. And this is what I always say. If you aim here, that's good. But you won't reach any higher than here. If you aim here, even all the way up here, you can hardly see. Maybe you won't aim higher than here. Maybe you'll come here, maybe you'll get all the way. But you have an opportunity. You actually might land there. It's like the shoot for the moon, at least you'll be among the stars. If you're aiming here, cool. You're not gonna get any further though. And believing in yourself costs nothing. And you know, a new semester, a new school year, a new class, a new school, all of that is an opportunity to have a fresh start. Like right now, it's the start of January. It's a new beginning and we should take every new beginning, whether it's a Monday or a start of a new month or a new semester, it's just, a mindset thing and so reminding ourselves even that a new day is a new beginning and that any bad habits we have or any area we've lacked in is really irrelevant because we're not living in the past we're living now so first of all you got to continually remind yourself that you are going to do well and yeah absolutely recommend my confidence video for that if that is an issue just focusing on things you're good at like i have lots of strategies for that first of all though believe in yourself and this is the essential first layer because next layer on top of that which we'll be getting to is that we have to set goals and systems and i have another like change your life in six months and become that girl video and there we talk a lot about goals and system settings as well in case you're curious but even having set goals remember to still be a little open and flexible like if you have a goal to study each class for five hours a week for example but you have an exam coming up in one class then obviously eat out of some of those hours and use that for the exam don't be so set in your way so you sabotage yourself and if there's a party you really want to go to like a sweet 16 or a 21st birthday what do it it's fine it's just you have to cut down on some things but you you pick and choose next thing when it comes to mindset which is kind of like vibes and if this is too fluffy for you we're, we have chapters okay so you can just skip that's fine but one thing i think is really cool that we have in like 2024 20, oh my god it's 2024 is the whole romanticizing thing and I think that romanticizing studying is really good. For me, it actually really helped and I did study with me live. So it's like, oh, this is really nice. You're playing low five beats and drinking tea. I'm with my dog and with all of you. So yeah, romanticize studying and being a good student, maybe even make a vision board. And let me just say, Pinterest is full of this. Study and be hot, hot girl study. Rory Gilmore, Elle Woods, all of this is actually pretty cool, like a lot of throwbacks too, so it works for like all generations. But I'm a little bit obsessed, like I don't even like search for it or anything, but just because I have like a lot of that girl stuff on my Pinterest, every time I open a Pinterest app, I get these like hot girl study things, I'm like, I guess we do. And if you want to like read in bed and like kick up your feet or like light candles or like have your energy drink, have it in a glass with ice, sit outside and read in the sun or in the snow, um, just be careful. But whatever you want to do to make studying like not too comfortable, obviously, but like romantic, like cool. If you have stuff on your desk, anything that helps you get focused and feel like it's a good activity, like it's positive, do that. Also, throughout the whole school year and the semester, one thing that's really important to remember for your mindset is that no test is make or break. Honestly, it's more of a journey and the end goal is to get the grade you want and to get the knowledge and understanding you need of the subject, 
but it, one grade won't ruin it. I would always die over any test, whether or not it was important. And I remember I was listening to the Savvy Psychologist, a podcast, and she had this tip for when you get anxious, like think, okay, what's the worst case scenario? And I was like, oh, the worst case scenario is that I, I fail or I get a C or a D or whatever. Like, that's the worst case scenario. And it's like, what happens? So I'm like, that's what happens, I guess, like either I have to retake the test or like, you know, and she's like, and what can you do? And I'm like, well, I guess I can retake the test, ask to retake the test, ask for an extra assignment to bring up my GPA. There's a lot I can do actually. And I was like, oh, wow. I remember actually, like I was telling you about the story um, yesterday that I, I was like lying between a B and an A and a subject that I really cared about in high school. And my teacher was like, I'm not entirely sure how to grade you. And I was like, give me an extra assignment. Just do it like anything, anything. I'll have it by tomorrow. And she was like, okay, fine. We'll do a chat about this, this and this. Present for 10 minutes and then I'll quiz you for 10 minutes. And I was like, sure thing. Thank you. I love you. And I stayed up all night working on it came in the next day, presented it, got an A. You can always find a solution, but you can find a solution if you're suffocating, you have to breathe. So no test is make or break. You can always fix whatever is going on, but only if you're in good enough of a mindset to be solution oriented. Also, visualization. <laughs> This actually, it's not just me, it's not just hippie stuff. My teacher actually told me to do this when I was gonna have a math exam because I was really nervous. I didn't like it. Our math was very computer-based in upper secondary school. So she was like, okay, visualize yourself. I always close my eyes and talk about visualization. Visualize yourself going into the room, sitting down, going on the computer, finding all these things, doing it, whatever, reading the questions, answering the questions, and just succeeding. So I do two things, actually. First of all, visualize whatever you want to get out of your GPA. Like if you want to get into a good school, if you're doing a trade, and like working in that trade, whatever it is that you want to get out of it. If you're in college, getting the dream job you want to land or getting into an MA or a PhD, whatever it is, visualize that just to like get yourself through the things you're doing because it can be tough sometimes. And then secondly, like I said, using it to actually envision yourself nailing presentations and tests and all of that because it really helps. The thing is, I love this fact, your brain can't tell the difference between you closing your eyes and visualizing yourself doing something and you actually doing it. So if you're visualizing something and then you get into the situation, you'll feel calmer because your brain actually thinks you've done it before. Chapter two, organize your space. <laughs> totally, my wee house. <laughs> I'm better at organizing my desk than my room though, I'll tell you that much. So first of all, declutter regularly. Just keep your study area tidy and clean and keep things away don't have like five teacups on your desk it's first of all it's in the way of important things like your books and secondly it's just that's a bad vibe like it's disrespectful to your studying to you and it's just not a calm and inviting studying area the way we are around us is the way we're feeling and when you're studying you're supposed to feel very clear and calm and organized and then Having all these things on your desk or in your study area, the room, whatever that shows you that you're not, is not the best thing you'll understand and it's gonna stress you out. Create zones. So have like a place where you study, a place where you relax, and have things organized in storage, like, oh, there are those books and there are those books, and this is where you study and this is where you sleep, and don't mix those things. I do, and it's a problem. Sometimes I'll get into bad habits like like I love studying languages on my phone and my apps, which is good because if I'm waiting for a friend or something, I can just study a little bit of Czech on my phone. But then on the other hand, sometimes I lay in bed and do it. And then sometimes when I'm going to bed, I end up just like studying and oh my God, that's so nerdy. Anyways, then you're not going to bed. It's a problem. And also like, I used to take naps at my desk. I don't do that anymore. Cause like then you'll actually like feel like it's okay to take a nap when you're studying and if you're gonna do that go away from the desk go to bed take a nap then come back honestly breaks are super important when studying because you do get overload so you need to relax tell me that 10 years ago but you do but don't do that at the desk physically move yourself and it's good too even if you're walking to the bed to take a nap it's good that you got up and walked so yeah do create zones don't be like me. 
I've been working on it and it makes it a lot better. Like you, cause when you get to your desk, you're like, okay, it's time to work. When you get to your bed, it's like, ooh, I'm in bed, I can chill. Limit distractions. Did you know that if a phone is on a table, even if it's turned off, it distracts you? Like there are studies, like two people are at a table. There's a phone there, they know it's off. They're still looking at the phone to see if something will happen. So don't just like put your phone on flight mode. Put it in the drawer, put it away, don't look at it. If you have your own office or your own desk, then personalize your space. You can have a little poster, inspirational quote. Maybe that'd be a great time to have a vision board, some photos and calming elements, whether that's like a stone or like a little fountain or I don't know your dog and then as a habit try to like clean up every time you're finished studying just so that when you come back it's good chapter three creating systems i am going to recommend a system but i will start by saying that the most important thing the most important part of a system is that it works for you whether that's using a notebook several notebooks notion one note combination whatever works for you that's the best system but this is what i do first of all if i'm writing something by hand it is only to increase memory not to go back to i have terrible handwriting and i already have notebooks for personal use i'm not going to have them for studying as well so if i'm writing something it's just because writing by hand increases memory writing on the computer just blah 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 is kind of pointless unless you're looking back to it when i was in college and stuff i'd just be eating and answering questions because i i saw lots of people around me frantically writing down their notebooks writing on the computer not really paying attention just writing whatever the professor's saying and not immersing themselves and i think that's a big mistake because first of all the professor they give out the presentations usually the powerpoints sometimes it's even like on video but even if it's not a video you can surmise it from the powerpoint but when you're just sitting there writing, you're not really paying attention, you're not really including yourself, and you're using the wrong part of your brain. It's like you're trying to memorize something when in fact you're supposed to learn something. And those were two very different things, to take in information and reflect on that and to just take in information and write it down like a robot. If that's the case, then you might as well just sit at home and read or just be a typewriter. <laughs> you know how sometimes you can write something and you're not really thinking? Like, I don't think your brain is that fired off as you think when you're just writing down something people say. So if I'm writing by hand, it's like, like I told you that story where it's fluctuating between A and a B and I had to do the chat. I was making thought maps, just writing notes, all of that. And that was just to increase memory, not to use. I was just like, blah, 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 blah. Just systemize it in any way I could to be 100% sure that I've remembered it. And that's what I think you should do. Cause writing by hand increases memory, but keeping track of what you're writing by hand is a B. So what I would recommend to use is Notion. And I recommend Notion for anything. I'm a casual Notion user. Like I don't have crazy systems on my Notion. I'm not like that technical, but I love Notion. I use it a lot. And the main reason honestly is because not only does it have a great system, but you can use it on your phone and your laptop and it just updates automatically and it's very simple and you can use it as an app, you can use it on a web browser. So it's pretty chill. So I do something like this. I have Notion for school and I have subjects and for each page you can make infinite amounts of pages. So let's say your subject one is history. Then you can have the page history. Then you can have notes and on notes you can have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And then going back to page history, you can have videos from the professor, you can have uh, sources, like whatever, infinite amounts of things. You can have all your papers there. Wish I did that, I miss my papers. Plus you can have a calendar for all of your subjects with like the, uh, the tests and stuff and the classes. And also one thing I find very useful that I do in all my subjects is that I create like an a list of everything I have to get through. So all of the classes I have to watch because often it's online and stuff. All of the additional resources, I put whatever is not obligatory on the bottom obviously, but then everything I have to read and I just cross it out and I see my progress and then you can sort of make out like, okay, it's March. So where should I be in the progress? And what's cool about that, and I do this actually for my, um, when I read a book, shit, I forgot forgotten about that for a while but I was doing it I was having a reading list for books and every time I read a book and this was personal but you can also do this for school and I have done this 
for example, if you have, um, let's say you have 45 articles and you have to keep track of them for exams. What you can do is when you finish an article, you like highlight it and make it into a page and then on that page, write your notes about the article. Also, what has been useful for me with notes, I remember this especially when I was independently taking classes in high school, was to color code. So I'd, for example, if something was a, um, you're trying to learn different terms in a subject, like I took psychology and there are lots of terms in psychology like behaviorist theory or whatever i'd like highlight behaviorist theory in blue and you read it over and over and eventually you're learning the terms but then also there are two different reasons to highlight one is to learn something another thing is to read something quicker for example i'm a history major dates and years are very important in history obviously so if you highlight every year um, like for example, if I highlight 1814, then not only will it be easier for me to remember when things happen because I'll like see they are highlighted, but also if I'm quickly reading through something, like if I'm getting quizzed, can I need to read a little bit about the Norwegian constitution, but where's the Norwegian constitution? And then I see 1814, I'm like, oh, there it is. And then I can read. And that makes your notes a lot more useful, not just like, oh, I'm writing things down, but you can actually go back and look at them with efficiency. Chapter four, time management. Put everything down in your calendar the second you hear about it. I seem like the rudest person sometimes because I still do this. Not just like, oh, you're at school and you're having an exam, but like if I'm talking to someone about having lunch, or if I'm at the doctor and they need a checkup, whatever, I'm like pulling out my phone immediately and I'm, I'll always say to them like, oh, I'm not rude, I'm just putting it down. But still, I guess the initial reaction would be like, but I have to, because. Otherwise, they'll forget it and I'm not alone. A lot of people forget these things and it's not because I don't care. It's just, I don't particularly remember what I'm doing on March 18th. So it's better to just put it down immediately and not miss anything. You do not want any surprises when it comes to finals. Like I said, like you can definitely do Notion and that's especially very good when you have different things. Like for example, having a planner for work, having one for studies and having one for like YouTube videos if you're a creator. But no matter what, everything that's super, super important, that goes into my phone. Because what do I always have with me? Always, 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 everywhere, my phone. Physical planners are so cool and so pretty and I get really happy when I get them for Christmas, but I don't carry them with me everywhere. I already carry notebooks and books, so I can't. Other people do, and I get that, but I still think you should put it down in your phone because your phone can actually alert you. But yeah, still definitely use the physical planner if you want. Like I said, writing things down is very powerful, so it might actually help you. Another thing is to prioritize tasks. I know a lot of things are important, but you gotta see what is the most important thing and whatever is the most important, that's what you do at the start of the day. The non-negotiable things should be done before dinner. Like if you have on your list to watch an episode on Netflix, that's great, but that's gotta go, that's gotta go after studying and definitely after work. <laughs> and when you have tackled the most important tasks of the day, you also feel better and everything else is more fun. It's not that fun stress watching shows because you have stuff to do, I know. <laughs> so, but, and after you do like the hardest parts, things of your day and realize, oh, they actually weren't that hard. You're like, I'm kind of invincible. But also set realistic goals, break, all you have to do into like chunks, different things you gotta do and consider both work and things you do for fun and see how long is this realistically gonna take. And also, you know what? Maybe time yourself. Maybe don't just assume how long things will take, learn, gather data on how long things will take and actually work based on that. That being said, once you have data, time block, and you know what, time block before that too, but then also see realistically. Time blocking is just putting into calendar from two to four every Wednesday, I'm gonna study this subject, from three to five every Thursday, I'm gonna be at the gym. And then we do this and we time block and we do it and we see what's working, what's not, and then we adjust. That's why I said in the beginning of this video, you gotta be flexible. Cause yeah, it's plan to work, work the plan, but if the plan isn't really working, then you gotta adjust not worth it just to be able to say oh i did what i'm supposed to do like it's all for you you're not living your life for someone else you don't have anything to prove you don't have anyone to impress except for yourself and if something isn't working then change it but time blocking is awesome and the longer you can spend on one activity the better because the thing is we lose 
like 20% of our energy switching between activities. So just reading one subject for an hour, then another subject for an hour, then another isn't really good. It's better to do three hours that day and three hours that day. But like I said, also schedule breaks. You really do need breaks. I think that's why the Pomodoro method is so effective. Although I feel like the breaks are maybe a little overboard, but that's just me. But I usually take a break when I'm at the point where I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. But I think you should do it a little bit before that. You should probably take a break before you have a headache. But let's say like two hours, then 15 minutes, two hours, 15 minutes. I think that's reasonable. But it's also more of like just feeling it out. That's why I said you have to gather research about yourself. You can't just take my advice. You can't just take the computer's advice. You have to actually see what works for you. But no matter who you are, you need breaks. Chapter five, study strategies. And this is my favorite part. First of all, and my mom would kill me if I didn't mention this, read everything you can on paper. Did you know that your IQ actually increases more if you study on drugs than if you study sober digitally? That's crazy. That's insane. Like, and I know, cause I tried, like, I, I hate when I have subjects that have lots of articles, but I often do. And when I'm reading the articles online, I'm like, huh? I'm not learning anything, but when I'm reading it on paper, even if I'm not highlighting, although I love highlighting, but even if I'm not, I'm still learning more. Your mind just checks out when it's on the computer. Like it just doesn't work the same way. And I'm not sure why, but that's the way it is. But yes, my main tip is highlighting. First of all, when you're highlighting, you are recognizing what's important, so you're actively learning. Secondly, you can look back on it. And it's not even just looking back at the sentence you highlighted because they are important, but when you see those highlighted sentences or even just the highlighted word, often you'll remember what the whole thing is about. So you don't have to read everything. It's like your mind will do the reading for you because it's actually just remembering what you previously read. And because of this, I actually don't just highlight things that are important. I also highlight every single like headline and under headline. And sometimes I don't even read all of it. Like if I'm running out of time, I'll just quickly highlight every like those kind of headlines because then when I'm having my finals, if I have my study material, I can find out, okay, where do they talk about this? Where do they talk about that? Cause, uh, Cause headlines are usually, under headlines are usually pretty good. So, if you're like, oh, I have to write about Marie Curie, where does it say? And then you see it highlighted, Marie Curie, and you're like, yes. So it helps you, helps you learn a lot faster and helps you with the exam and it helps you with revisions. What more can you want? Honestly, my main strategy for getting A's in school is just reading through and highlighting. That for me, that works better than answering test questions. It works better than talking with other students. It works better than going to class. But that's just my personal experience. But to me, this has been my number one thing. But then also going to class is obviously important. And honestly, not for everything you think. Not just because, oh, the professor is talking. Yeah, the professor is talking. Oftentimes though, you can find that in the book as well. However, if you pay attention to class, whatever the professor is talking a lot about, and most passionately about, that'll probably be on the test. So that's why it's important to pay attention in class and see when your professor's lighting up and when they're taking extra care or saying, oh, this is important. That's whatever the exam will probably be about. And if you have time, do any assignments a teacher gives you. Obviously you have to do whatever's mandatory, but like I said, even though the test questions aren't my like number one, they do come in handy because oftentimes also test questions are also finals questions and they just help you revise, they help you see how your teacher sees things, helps you see their style of questioning and it just gives you an opportunity to like check what you know. So oftentimes like yeah sometimes I'll write it out or whatever but a lot of times I'll just do it in my head just to see if I know it and if I don't know it I'll look it up in the book and learn it and I won't like mark it as done until I actually know what the question is and can answer it fully. It's a really good way to test yourself. So like your professor isn't just giving you tests to give you tests, they're not bored. And like I said earlier, um, creating a system of texts is really good because then you can write notes on your text. And I think you should write notes on your text 
because at least in my field of study you have to directly relay texts to um, the questions when you're answering so having an overview of the text will make it a lot simpler if you have 150 texts and you don't remember which is which you're screwed and i do think there's some merit to talking to your classmates about it about subjects um getting different perspectives defending your perspective learning going back and forth and just seeing how you talk about it how other people talk about it and creating new ideas together but i also do think and maybe this has been more of a thing for me but maybe because i'm an introvert that i get more from it than talking to my classmates is just telling someone about it explaining theories to people who aren't studying it is actually what shows how much you truly know. It's really easy to explain the theory to someone who can fill out blanks because they know the subject. But if you're starting on zero, that truly shows how well you know it to be able to teach Plato to someone who doesn't know the basics of Greek philosophy or philosophy in general. Whilst if I'm talking to my fellow classmates and I'm saying something they can sort of piece together, but if I'm talking to my brother who doesn't really care about what I'm talking about and he's like, wait, what are you saying? Then I have to study more. And I think just practicing talking about it, which is sort of like writing, like creating your own way of explaining a phenom phenomenon is really, really good when it comes to studying. Like that helps you prepare. So even if you're talking to your dog or your cat about it, you're still formulating and practicing and making your mind work on something, reflecting on something.